Hello families and welcome back to a new video. So I am filming this today, uh, September 28th, uh, the day that you all will be doing the homework with your students. So today for math, we learned about a topic called compensation. And I wanted to make sure I got this video out in time because compensation can be one of those topics that is very hard to master. So I definitely wanted to jump on this and make sure that I am getting this out for you as soon as possible. So we're going to first talk about why we are doing compensation and what the purpose of compensation is. So compensation, the reason that we do compensation is to make our addition uh, easier to add. Uh, students are familiar with skip counting by twos and tens. Uh, so by counting by tens or making a number a 10, it makes it a little bit easier to add rather than adding, let's say, numbers that aren't tens, like um, six plus seven. If we make the number a 10, again, the addition is easier for most kids because they're most familiar with skip counting by twos, fives, tens, and so on. So let's go ahead and show an example. I'm going to jump right in. So let's take a look at the first problem which is going to be 18 plus 15. So the idea here again is that we want to look at both of these numbers and we wanna to try to see which one of these numbers is closest to a 10. And what I mean by a 10 is our 10s. Each student has a 120s chart that I sent home with them this week. And again, we're focusing on our 10s. So again, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. So when we're looking at both of our numbers here, we want to see which one of these numbers is going to get us closest to a 10. So if we first find 18 on the 120s chart, here it is here. And then we're going to find 15 on the 120s chart. And we're going to look at these two numbers and compare them to see which one of these numbers is going to be closest to a 10. And the number that's closest to a 10 is 20 because we see we only have to make two hops to get to 20. Whereas if we started with 15, we would have to make five hops. So 18 is going to be the closest number to a 10. So 18, what do we have to add to 18 to get us to a 10? Well, if I find 18 on my 120s chart, I see that I have to make one jump, two jumps to get me to a 10. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add two underneath my 18 to get me to a 10. With compensation, however, whatever you do to one side, you do the opposite to the other side. Because if I added two here and also added two here, my answer would be incorrect. So I'm compensating for what I added here. So that means I have to take some from here. So if I added two to my 18 to get me to that 10, I need to subtract two from my other side. So if I look at my 120s chart, I have 15 and subtracting or minus two, so I go back two hops, and that would put me at 13. So 15 minus two is 13. Now I have to bring those numbers back together. The theory is now it's easier to add this, 20 plus 13, versus adding 18 plus 15. So again, if we use that 120s chart and we find 20 plus 13, we first find our number 20, which again is gonna be right here, and we are adding to that 13. Now, we have discussed in class that when we, are go when we are adding 10, we know that we are going down on our 120s chart. When we are adding one, we know we go over to the right. So again, we are adding 13. And the number 13, there are 10, I'm sorry, there's one 10 and three ones. So that lets students know they need to go down one 10 and over three ones to the right. So if we find 20, we're going to go down 110, which puts us at 30, and then we need to go over three tens. So we run out of room on this uh, last section here, so we're at 30, but we need to add three more. One, two, three. So our answer, our final answer, is going to be 33. Okay? So let me show you another example. Our next example is going to be 33 plus 19. So again, the same theory here. We're looking at both of our numbers and we're trying to see which one of these numbers, which one of these add-ins is going to be closest to a 10. If we're looking at our 10s, we have the numbers 33 and 19. So we're going to find 33. Here's 33 here. And we're going to find the number 19. And remember, our 10s are here on the column. 
So we are going to see which one of these numbers, 19 or 33, is going to be closest to a 10. And we can see that 19 is going to be closest to our 10. So what are we adding to 19 to get to our 10? We are adding 1. Okay. So we are adding 1 to 19 to get us to our 10. So that means if we are adding 1 to this side, we have to compensate and subtract 1 from the other side. We're using the same number always, but if we add on one side, we always subtract on the other. So 33 minus 1, so when we subtract, we go to the left, minus 1 is going to be 32. And once again, now we need to put these two add-ins back together. So now our new equation is going to be 32 plus 20. Now again, we can further decompose this number to make it a 10, which is 3 tens, which is 30, and 2 ones. Now we have 30 plus 2 plus 20, okay? So we are going to find 30 on our 120s chart, plus 2, so we're going to go over 1, 2, there's our 2. And then we need to add 20. And remember, going down in our columns is going to be adding by 10. So we go down two tens. There's one ten and two tens. So our final answer is going to be 52. So showing you how to decompose it further into a 10 is another way. Or you can just, as I showed you in the first example, just solely find 32 on your map. And then add 20. Go down two tens one, two, and still arrive at the same answer. So this way to further decompose it is for students who need a little more understanding of breaking our numbers into tens and ones. But if we've mastered that, we can just go straight to 32 plus 20 by using the 120s chart. So I hope this helps. Please make sure you rewind and you pause it and play it and watch it as many times as you need to. I already told students it can be a little tricky at first, but as long as they keep practicing and trying their best, it's going to get easier. The first day is always the hardest. So I'm going to go ahead and post this as soon as I can. And please let me know on Dojo if you have any further questions. I will be sending home a written explanation with the same information on it today. So please make sure you look out for that in your child's folder. Alrighty, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night. Bye-bye.